pleasure of uh, interviewing Todd Gretner from Crestor. Uh, Todd is one of the major producers. He did over 330 loans uh, last year and is a constant uh, producer, does uh, anywhere from three to four million a month. And uh, Todd, before we uh, start discussing uh, your professional career, uh, everybody that I interview, they always have some interest in where people come from and uh, how you got in the business and, and what your market area is. So hey, where's it come from? Grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, okay. and uh, went to school in the, in the Carolinas, and just loved this uh, area and temperature and marketplace so much. Decided to try and make it my home. Um, graduated from a college in Greensboro, Guilford College, mm -hmm. doing heard of it. Mm -hmm. economics, and um, really not knowing what credit was <laughs> when I got out of school, <laughs> kind of <laughs> fell in the backwards and uh, with good. A, a local finance company. Uh -huh. And uh, so started on the consumer loan business and, you know, chasing uh, past dues, which I decided this is not my forte. And yeah, not a lot of money in it, but good experience. Yeah. Um, but, you know, started uh, with the, uh, you know, equity loans, second mortgages, and that really was of interest to me, dealing with the uh, just a variety of different people from the attorneys and the appraisers and title mm -hmm. companies that uh, wanted to pursue the mortgage industry. Um, now, there. how long ago was that? I uh, graduated in 78, so did that for you know just a couple of years mm -hmm. after graduating. I think my salary starting was like, uh, uh, gross was $600 a month, which is, uh, I thought I was overpaid at that time. Hey, I sold computers for IBM, and that's about what they paid you back in uh, 68. Yeah, you know, right. Like, you know. so, uh, I thought there must be a more lucrative portion of uh, the banking industry and uh, mm -hmm. got in with, with the mortgage industry. Uh, down, and what's your market area? Oh, uh, that was Greensboro at that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then and, went, and now where is it? I'm currently in Martinsville, Virginia, which is uh, southwest Virginia, an hour south of Roanoke, hour north of Greensboro, right on the line here. And our uh, county has 40,000 people. The city that I do lending in has uh, approximately 17,000 people. Uh, primarily blue collar in that we have a, uh, well, rather had quite a bit of textile industry here and also uh, heavy in the furniture industry. Well, you must own, with those kind of volumes, you must, uh, you must damn near own that, uh, those towns. Well, when I, That's a lot of volume. It's you know, kind of ironic. When I, when I came to Crestar, I think uh, they were making two to three loans a month here, had about a two three three percent market share. And uh, I think now we currently have uh, about a 52 to 54 percent market share. So yeah, that's amazing. Basically, uh, one out of two people obtaining a mortgage in my county comes see Todd. Mm. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, when when you started off, and and uh, uh, did you uh, go after realtors, or did you have a game plan when you started in the business? Yeah, when I, when I came to this marketplace in Martinsville, I was primarily had second mortgage experience. I really never originated a purchase money transaction, so to speak, before. So I was going through quite a learning curve uh, when I initially came in, and uh, my former bank here that I was with uh, really did not give me any assistance. I mean, never went out and introduced me to the realtors. So I really started cold, you know, never having started this process. And of course, uh, like everyone who's, you know, making mistakes out, I went with the rate sheets and said hello to everyone and yeah. primarily uh, got my business from the realtors. Um, we have approximately uh, about 122 realtors uh, in my marketplace. And I think, you know, we have to understand Martinsville versus a Northern Virginia um, quite a disparity in in the conditions and the way we conduct business here, being a small southwest. Well, that's why I think this interview is going to be a great interest because there is, a, you know, not everybody does stuff in Manhattan uh, or in Bethesda, Maryland. So uh, uh, there is a group of loan officers out there uh, that I think is going to be very interested in this because they do exactly what you do. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very hard market to be successful in. Oh, very much so. And, uh, you know, when I go to, you know, the, the different seminars and the Duncans, and, of course, they say, you know, deal with, you know, a handful of realtors, I really cannot make that work here. Well, um, you know, I, I deal yeah. with all 120. Now, of course, you know, 40% are full-timers, and, of course, 10%, they all say, are doing 90% of the business. But I cannot, um, you know, do dual advertising with one specific firm or realtor without alienating uh, these other firms. Now, you know, I told you before we uh, started that I have never done an interview 
where something new uh, didn't come up. We, we, I'm sure you acknowledge, we just finished talking about that, and already you have come up with something uh, that no one has talked about, and that is working in areas like this, uh, when you do the Todd Duncan seminars and the others, you know, it's all getting into, you know, centers of influence and getting those top ten and leveraging off them, and uh, uh, in here you're doing uh, just the opposite because that's what you have to do in your market area. So I actually would like to pursue that a little bit further. Uh, normally I kind of bring this up, ratchet it up into the present, but I, but I think this is really germane to a lot of people out there. So I wondered if we could get into that in a little more detail on what you do. Sure, Jen. Well, again, um, I'm, I'm a kind of a back-to-basics person where I try and stay in front of realtors. Um, I don't really go out with my rate sheets and make calls any longer. You know, I've, I've kind of graduated past that. We're a small community. I and mean, I go to my mall and uh, I'll see 10 people, 20 people that I've made mortgages to. And uh, realtors know me. We're on a first-name basis. They are not apprehensive about calling me on a Saturday or Sunday or, or 10 o'clock at night. Um, and of course, another aspect is that you know I, I feel that I know the guidelines and the business and how to work alone extremely well. Uh, when an applicant comes in, um, they have a 98.6% chance of getting their mortgage with Todd. That's my approval ratio. So I have very little fallout. Um, I actually see all my clients personally. Um, I do not have an administrative mm-hmm. assistant. I do not hand these people off after a five, ten minute conversation. I take uh, probably about a 40, 40 to 45 minute application. Do you take it by hand, or do, it just, uh, or do you take it on laptop? Software. I used to do it by hand. You know, got the clean mm-hmm. out and did my application. But uh, we graduated a, a couple of years ago, and we're doing it, uh, of course, on, on the on the PCs. Mm-hmm. I, the reason I mention that a lot of people. Uh, I'm not suggesting you do it. You're obviously doing very well. You don't need my advice. Uh, but I, I know there's a, a segment out there that uh, will actually take them by hand mm-hmm. uh, just because they want that interaction as they sit and write and talk. You know, rather. Uh, I think that's very important. I actually turn my PC screen around to my clients across the desk so okay. they can follow or you know, give them a 1003 so they can look at it and kind of anticipate uh, you know, your next question, I think, is important. That's a nice tip. But to me, I think it's extremely important that the LO handles the application and kind of sees the light at the end of the tunnel is how is this transaction, transaction going to work and get it to the closing table. I mean, anyone can fill out the 1003, but how is it going to work? What type of items, logistics, documentation, proof of such and such are you going to need for your processor to get this loan to closing? So when I, after, um, you know, we say goodbyes and give them my business card and my processor's business card, when I go in conversation with our processor, she's so very comfy that we have one, a complete application Todd knows how this thing is going to work. He knows what type of documentations that she needs to follow up on, and obviously the loans get uh, approved and closed in a timely manner. When when you uh, you do this, it raises a question because of the area you're in. Uh, what kind of are you doing VAs and FHAs uh, too? Uh, Very much. I would so. think your area would lend itself to a lot of that. Uh, kind of laugh, and uh, within my organization, in that I have the smallest average loan size in the company. Congratulations. $70,000. Oh uh, so you can imagine I do quite a bit of FHA, federal housing, right. and uh, of course we're very blessed in Virginia to have a housing, state housing agency, VHD. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I used super. to do stuff with them. Um, so yeah, I would say a good 20 to 25 percent of my business is Govies, these smaller loans, very paper intensive. And, of course, you're dealing with a caliber person, but obviously that might have some credit flaws and, and problems in the past. A lot of first-time homebuyers also. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when, what would be your advice for loan officers that are uh, um, it, maybe not starting out today, maybe have three, four, five months' experience that are working in your environment uh, as far as getting started? Because uh, you and I both know that the way business was conducted uh, uh, 10, 12, 15 years ago, it's really kind of radically different. The market really has shifted. Well, uh, I think they first off got to got to know their products and programs inside and out. Um, they're going to have to be able to visualize um, how a particular transaction should work and what items and steps are necessary to bring it to the closing table. So, knowing your guidelines, your P&Ps, your requirements, I think is the very first basic step. Um, And I think someone's got to be unique and different in the marketplace, Um, not only with your realtors, but how do you go out and get business? How how do you differentiate yourself? And and that is a word 
uh, in concept that comes up all the time in interviews. Uh, there is a single thread that goes through every interview that I do, um, and that's the, uh, you know, the, the getting to know people intimately. And uh, that, that thread does go through, but you also have to differentiate yourself. So uh, could you give me some specific examples of what you do? Well, you know, I developed a little niche, you know, in our marketplace that I, I was the, you know, FHA expert. And any time you had a W loan, FHA, VA, or Virginia housing, um, Todd had a clear path and very knowledgeable. How's this going to work? Realtors call frequently. How should I write my contracts? What do we need to negotiate? Uh, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that may, again, this is not something that may work in a, in, in a northern Virginia uh, climate. Um, and something that um, I am just emphatic about is working on the referral relationship with my clients. Um, you know, because I know these first time these FHA buyers now are going to be step up buyers in hopefully five to six years. So I'm, I make it a point, John, at application time after we've pretty much worked through our, our paperwork and had everything signed and asked if there's any other questions. And after, obviously, they say no, uh, I look them straight in the eye and I tell them that I need their help and I wait for their response. Mm-hmm. But I tell them that I work on referrals and that I know that they will be speaking with hundreds of people about their new home. It's a very exciting time for them. And whether it's their friends or coworkers or family members, I want them to bring up my name in that conversation. That, oh, by the way, if you ever need a home or financing, make sure you come see Todd at Crestar. And I don't necessarily you know, ask for the five names for follow-up because I... Religious also after that with uh, the correspondence and the newsletters and and also the um, uh, uh, letters that I sent out uh, who reiterates who I am and of course keeps my name in front of them and I keep asking for the business and that's proved very successful and I think that would be uh, something that would parallel any marketplace. You know they've done some interesting studies. Uh, <laughs> on the uh, one I read, it, didn't, it, it was not an in-depth one, but uh, it was based on an in-depth one, on people who use the word, uh, and this is tangential to the conversation, but who use the word please. And uh, the response that you can get from using the word please, uh, it jumps like uh, 40%. I mean, it's just astronomical by looking someone in the eye and saying, you know, would you be kind enough or would you please, you know, give me something. Mm-hmm. So I, I think there is something there when you turn to somebody and ask them for a referral in a nice way. Yeah. Uh, they they actually want to help you. Well, yes, and I, and I think uh, unless you ask for it, I mean, I, I don't think you can go through the transaction and just assume that they're going to be doing this for you. And not only do you have to ask for it, or as you say, you know, get on your knees and say, please, beg for it. Because it does work wonders. Um, but, you know, we also follow up with that, of course, at uh, closing with a nice card. I uh, do give a gift to all my clients at mm-hmm. the closing table. I see. Do you attend all your settlements? Pardon? Do you attend all your no, settlements as many as you can? I do not attend settlements. Okay. Even in our small town here, um, I tell them I'm there in spirit and in money, but I would not be there presently. <laughs> <laughs> Not in body. Right. <laughs> uh, what else do you do that uh, helps differentiate yourself? Um, for example, I, I guess uh, uh, in your particular market area, how many loan losses do you think you're competing against? Well, in our marketplace, you know, we 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 got the big boys, and then the the Norwest and the first unions, you know, have come in, and. Um, you know, unfortunately, most uh, large corporations like that will give a, a loan officer six to eight months, uh, or they'll you know come in from a sister city and start to work in the marketplace and you know rate sheets. And of course, uh, here the you know they, they, the realtors want to see you physically and, and not only physically but also have a physical presence here. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, we have probably we. Nine to twelve loan officers that actually call in our marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Which, in the scheme of things, is not a lot, but maybe for a town of your size, uh, proportionally, is quite a bit. It's the yep. same as having forty or fifty. Oh, probably so. And um, it's it's hard to break into this market. As I said, you know, others have tried and, and come in, and um, I think you know the the, the realtors uh, want to have. I mean, of course, you're only as good as your last loan. But the realtors, before they hand over that contract, i.e. their commission check, um, you know, as you know, it's very hard breaking into a marketplace, and they want to see some tried and true to experience. Well, for those loan officers that are working small towns like this, um, 
do you find that uh, uh, that uh, it's going to be uh, easy for them to make contact with realtors in a, a small town atmosphere? Is it like some of the big cities where literally you cannot get into these back offices right. anymore? I mean, you just can't. Yeah, I mean, we do not have any closed door offices. We have no you know, affinity group financing within our, our realtor hall, houses. Um, so it is very easy to, to get into the door. It is very easy to speak with them. Of course, I would advise making an appointment or seeing them at lunchtime. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they are very accessible. And uh, we also not only see them on a business relationship, but also on a uh, you know personal a social relationship also mm-hmm. as far as different uh, parties or inter engagements or, or functions. Well, that's uh, usually a question I ask a little bit later, but you've raised the issue. And that is, do you find that um, the way you do business in in a small town like that, that it uh, pays to have, uh, uh, shall we say, more, uh, it, a social relationship uh, versus something that is strictly uh, professional? Oh, I uh, think it's a it's a huge benefit and, and bonus to to do that because um, not only are they seeing you on a professional relationship or uh, standpoint during the day. But also as a, a social function, and not that we're talking necessarily business, you know, it, it comes up in conversation. But um, you know, also, uh, you know, with their clientele, uh, you know, they have an opportunity, and vice versa, you of introducing them or you to different people who might uh, avail themselves of of their services. And of course, uh, you know, as I said, you know, after eight, excuse me, thirteen years here, you know, I'm. Uh, I believe in print advertisement in our real estate uh, publications and my pictures. Um, 90 percent of people know who I am just walking through the grocery store or the mall. Or See, that's what I'm looking for. I, I think that's good advice for people out there. Um, so Do you uh, spend a lot of money doing that? Um, not not a huge amount. I, my advertising, I probably spend uh, six hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. in print advertisement. I'm not a big believer in newspaper because I think you need a lot of redundancy. Uh, to see a specific, you know, uh, two by four inch ad. Um, but uh, my real estate book is an example. My uh, real estate publication is called Real Estate Review. Um, as you open the front page, I'm on the right hand side. So that's really your first position your eyes go to each and every time as you open a book or a magazine. You look at the right hand inside the page. That's right. It's a normal the publication I'm in, even up at the Smith Mountain Lake, same way. So that's my spot, and I'm a good advertiser. I tell uh, people who call on me that this is my page. If you're interested in my business and I'm going to be a, a year-long customer with you, I need this slot, and I, I usually get it. Hmm, very interesting. You're right. There is a natural progression. Uh, they've proven that when someone opens it, the, that they look in that upper right-hand corner. Yep, and I take the whole page. They can't miss me. Um, when when you, you use this uh, uh, media advertising, do you do any uh, what you and I might call direct advertising, where you're uh, blanketing the town with uh, uh, mailers and anything like that? Well, um, believe it or not, I really did not have a database until a year ago, and um, I went back and um, bought uh, some software, Mortgage Quest software, mm-hmm. sure. and um, had a, a young lady hired her, and for two weeks, that's all she did was put uh, literally 600, 800 loans, you know, on the books. Um, so I lost a lot of prior customers um, who I've obviously refinanced or redone, but um, I regret not doing it previously. And, and if you don't have a database, if you're not sending out those mailers, um, that should be a priority with you. I'm glad to hear you say that, your mea culpas, because uh, most of the people out there today uh, or you know, successful people like yourself, they are using ACT or Goldmine, or, or they're using some sort of a database. I, I said it too much in my interviews to repeat it very much here, but um, um, I mean, I, I couldn't live without my uh, database. I mean, I just if I didn't have ACT, I wouldn't know what to fall apart. Well, I thought, you know, being a, a little uh, rural bird that I didn't need it, and I was grossly wrong, and I wish I would have started it years ago because uh, it just, it's just huge. Mm, that's good advice. What about uh, when you're? I'd like to go back and talk about dealing with the realtors. Um, what kind of relationships do you have with uh, managers? <clears throat> How do you get around them? Do you have to? Do you have to develop relationships with them uh, in a small town? And uh, and then please address some of the realtors now. I don't know if you have them where you are, the Long of Fosters and whatever that uh, have their own mortgage subs now. 
Um, none of our firms, as I said, have a, a, a mortgage operation within their house. No affinity uh, uh, financing, anything along that line. Uh, we have uh, two major players in town. Uh, their realtor house consists of maybe 25 agents in one, 18 in, in another. Um, that control probably a good 80% of the business wow. in our in our marketplace. Um, and then you could pick up the smaller one, two, you know, four, four mm-hmm. agent uh, offices that are doing more of the outlying rural type areas. So um, we have two major uh, names in town. That's where the bulk of our million dollar producers are. Um, these, this is where I concentrate my marketing efforts. Um, those are where all the big hitters are. Mm-hmm. And yet I find it interesting that you um, go to all the other offices too. I, uh, but when you think about it, for a small town, that uh, kind of reminds me of some of the salespeople for A.G. Edwards, you know, that go into these small towns. and It's an incredibly profitable company because they, they go to all these little farm communities and they just knock on every single door and meet everybody. Well, if you, if you think of it, you, have, you know, if I have eight or ten small offices, if I can get a loan or two from them a month, um, it adds up very quickly. Right, exactly. I'm not, you know, ignoring them, I'm giving them special attention, and uh, I know they're not doing the volume as these two other major players, but it only takes one or two from each per month, and uh, you know the rewards are very handsome. Mm-hmm. There's a common thread is that uh, we had talked before we got on tape <laughs> that goes that flows through all the interviews. I normally don't ask it directly; it just kind of boils out. But I wondered if you would discuss, uh, uh, from a small town perspective, the uh, the concept of relation, uh, relationship selling and how important relationships are. Uh, with the clients? Uh, actually, with the realtors. Uh, with the realtors. You can, we can do clients or whatever you want. Okay. Well, I think with the realtors, um, <clears throat> you know, I think they have to feel warm and fuzzy about you. Uh, again, their commission check is, is on the line. Um, they want to know that uh, once they hand that individual off, that the transaction is going to close. I think it's very important. Uh, to keep in touch with them communication-wise throughout the process. Uh, we do send out a weekly weekly update every Thursday to not only to the borrower but the listing and selling agent because I know they're going to be talking with their clients over the weekend most likely. It's nice for them to have something in writing as far as how their loan is progressing, what's going on, so on and so forth. And no one else in our marketplace is doing that. Really? And That's we, amazing. I've gotten a lot of re- very positive response from that. How much they appreciate that, and they know that, you know, when they give a loan to Todd, I mean, very rarely do they call for an update. I'm calling them, letting them know how we're progressing, or giving them something in writing. And most likely, in two or three days, I'm telling, I'm, I'm calling them one to remind them that, or to inform them that their loan's been approved. And then I also use the fax machine to the listing and selling agent as far as, you know, news flash, hot news from Crestar, your loan's been approved and such and such, listing the conditions in writing. And I usually put a time frame on there, you know, 24 hours, 48 hour turnaround, you know, subject to an appraisal. And not only do I fax that once, but typically twice, because I figure it's going to lay on the fax machine, another agent's got to do it, you know, pick it up and give it to mm-hmm. that specific, specific realtor or put it in their mailbox. Um, and they're... I say, oh, geez, you know, Doris is doing another loan with Todd. Isn't this wonderful? Or, geez, maybe I ought to start doing some business with Todd. Because Doris is a big hitter. She's a million-dollar producer. <clears throat> She's obviously getting loans approved through this guy. So um, so that's important uh, as far as, you know, the relationship with the realtor on an ongoing basis is that, is that communication once you get that deal. It's interesting that you mentioned the started talking about faxes. You know, faxes, one would think in this day and age is really kind of a low tech thing. Years ago, it was kind of high tech. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when it was real high tech. Um, but uh, you had the different bought things. You had to have three systems on your fax and everything. But um, it's amazing the people that I talk to that are uh, pretty heavy producers that rely on the facts, and the reason they do that is just because of exactly the example you gave, that someone's got to pick that piece of paper up and someone's got to look at it. You know they're going to be reading it, Jeff. <laughs> right, well, and, and just not the person you're sending it exactly. to. Exactly, and it's going to lay on their desk or in their box, and I use it as a marketing tool. Exactly. Without a doubt. And an and, and, and expensive marketing tool. It's somewhat expensive. It's not no. time-consuming. No. Um, but actually, I'm not, I'm not to say inexpensive no, because saying. you're not really dumping a lot of money in it. You don't have to get in your car and drive over. Uh, not at all. And, and these are all pre-printed. All we do is fill in the blanks and shoot them out in the way mm-hmm. they go uh, versus you know email. Email is going to reach mm-hmm. one person. 
You said that you're in your town you, you get a, a credit challenged, and I assume by that you mean some of these FICO scores probably, uh, you know, dip down into the low 600s, uh, maybe even high 500s at right. times. Um, how do you deal with that in a town uh, like that? Um, and, and I say that because you have a very high approval rate, and obviously um, under the uh, concept of you're only as good as your last deal, uh, every deal is precious to these realtors, and you just absolutely don't want to lose them. Mm-hmm. So what do you do? We do a lot more touchy-feely feely with the customers, um, with credit explanations, helping them you know, get these collections paid, so on and so forth. And with our underwriting uh, through, well, the only way we used to do things you know, was by sending loan up with, uh, to the underwriters as opposed to the automation. Um, as long as we documented and got things cleaned up, cleared up, um, our underwriters were very good with FHA, and I rarely got one turned down. Mm-hmm. If it all made sense to them as far as you know, the time elements, what occurred, what happened in these individuals' lives, the horses behind them, they're back on track, here we go. Um, got one in the works that just the other day came back in after two years in pre- of, uh, from the first time I pre-qualified her. And again, counseling them, spending that extra time. I think that's what that's what a lot of loan officers miss is that you know they they, they want to slam dunk everyone, and you know, give something back, taking that little extra time with that more marginal customer, work with them to get their credit, and tell them and show them how it works, how, what needs to occur, how can you improve your credit score. So after a year or two. I want you to come back and see Todd because I want to help you get into a home. You know who does that? that Don Ehrman and uh, Linda Tippy yeah. uh, with your company. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have the same philosophy too. They, they take a real long-term look at business, and they understand that uh, you may have somebody come if you treated them right. They may come back to you in two years, and you know you keep doing that for a number of years. All of a sudden, you got a lot of people coming back in two years. You do. And remember, you're asking them to refer some business to you while they're there at your doorstep, also. And if they like what you say, in other words, they might have been to another. Another uh, company who got brushed off. Hey, you got lousy credit. You're wasting my time. Give me a call. You know, in five years, you know, get a lifetime attitude. Um, but if you're genuinely warm, showing that you're caring, that you're willing to go that extra step to help them, I think it's going to reap again benefits down the road. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here for the long term. Uh, let me uh, let me address a, a, an area with you that. Uh, I don't bring up a lot, but I think with the small town, I do want to ask you about it, and that is pricing. And uh, how important is pricing in the small town? Do you, do you think it's any different than in, uh, you know, some of the larger uh, urban areas, the Washington metropolitan area? Um, I think everyone is very price conscious. Um, I think that's important to clients as they walk in the door, as it is with everyone. Um, do I have to give up a lot? I probably don't have to give up as much as a Northern Virginia. Yeah, I'm sure. I think uh, I'm probably 50 boys, 50 basis points off my rate sheet, you know, on average. And um, you know, it's uh, I'm very conscious about pricing. You know, I get what the market will bear. I want to make the customer happy. You know, I want to make profitable loans. Um, but I do give up some, um, and um, I think it's just human nature to be. Um, and, and we have very, you know prudent, intelligent shoppers who are doing price comparison and calling ABC Mortgage Company and this bank, and you know they, they know where the, the marketplace is and, and uh, what, what the competition is quoting. And um, you know we do our best on pricing like everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems more, more recently we're, we're giving up more and more. It's down to usually go up to 75, even 100 bips to, to make a loan work. Mm-hmm. When when you're um, do you, are you finding in a small this is kind of a throwaway cash I'm more curious than anything else for my own edification uh, are you finding any people at the lower rungs of the ladder there that are dealing in VA and FHA and I'm using the internet just to get information. Um, I tell you what, John, I wouldn't want to do an FHA VHDA loan over the internet. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. As much as they're using it to uh, check price uh, up in the uh, some of the urban areas that uh, uh, the people I interview, for example, in the Washington metropolitan area, a significant amount of people up there are using the internet uh, not to put loans through, but as to, to get information on pricing. Um, yeah, and that, that's a, that's going to be a, a problem with with our retail offices in, in that, uh, of course, they are very sharply priced. Um, and I think um, if you, I, I use a story or a scenario, you know, as far as the evils of, of the internet, and you know, you really don't know who you're you're dealing with, and it could be some fellow in their basement, you know, yada yada yada. Of course, mm-hmm. you know, there's are the Ditex and the Mortgage dot coms out there, and their price pricing is very very sharp. Um, you know, I do have computer savvy people who have actually gotten loans over the internet, and things have worked out very, you know, so so for them. 
Um, but I don't, I'm not really finding a, a major influx of people saying that, you know, this is, this is what I found on the Internet as far as this price and that price. And, uh, you know, if, if it's out of the ballpark, if I can't make the loan, if I can't be competitive in price, um, uh, again, I tell them to go for it and uh, let me know how it went. So, uh, well, I, didn't, I didn't think you would. I, I think I knew that answer. Mm -hmm. um, but what about some of the affinity groups here that we haven't talked about? Uh, do you actively pursue any other uh, areas outside of the realtor box? By that, I mean CPAs, uh, certified financial planners. Oh, I have some good relationship with uh, attorneys. We've got about five attorneys in town that do the bulk of the real estate. And um, you know, they refer me business. I refer them business and uh, call on them uh, maybe once a month, some CPAs. And uh, I've even gone in the H&R um, block um, retail shops with flyers, neon flyers. You know, Don't spend your tax refund until you talk to me. And I had some lot. I had a lot of um, resistance as far as uh, allowing me to put my flyers out in these offices. So I told them, I said, "Look, you know, you got the bulk of your business is people coming in doing short forms for you know forty, fifty dollars." I said, "How would you like to be doing the long form for these people next year?" Um, and that took away the resistance and yeah. uh, got my flyers out. I like that a lot. And they didn't. Uh, it didn't really amount to anything. Sorry to say. That's okay. Um, it's the idea of trying something like that. Sure, I thought it was a great idea. Um, but really, I, I don't do a whole lot with affinity uh, as far as uh, CPAs or uh, stockbrokers or uh, don't do a whole lot with it. Mm -hmm. um, to get back to an area we haven't talked about a lot, what do you do specifically for your clients? Uh, you said that you do a, a couple mailings. Uh, do you call them? Do you uh, uh, form any kind of permanent bond with them? Uh, how do you how do you get the referrals? I, I know you ask at the table, but beyond that, now, other than asking at the table, uh, I have a uh, card thanking for their business, reminding that I work on referrals. I told you I uh, give them a gift at closing. Um, Wait, what is that gift? Well, I started out with a bottle of champagne. You know, kind of thinking it's a celebrative type occasion, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a lot of mixed emotions on that. Yeah, that's just a Southern Baptist love, yeah, right? Yeah, people didn't drink, or <laughs> even gave some to some underage people. You know, nineteen, twenty year olds. Uh, so I did that for about two, three years, and then I. I went to smoke detectors, which I thought was a great mm -hmm. idea, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, easily obtained. I'm not chugging 25 bottles of champagne out of the out of the grocery store or anything like that. And uh, the uh, first one of smoke detectors proved to be a um, uh, a nice gift. Just it's, it's not very expensive, John. It's just something at the end of the transaction to say, hey, thank you, thank you for your business. Enjoy your home. Be safe in it. Um, and then from there, um, other than that, um, I, of course, I sent them out. Uh, uh, probably a, a letter to each one quarterly. Uh, I don't have a newsletter. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I think um, I was talking to someone. I was just thinking, as, as I'm kind of musing as we're talking, that, gee, wouldn't it be neat to get a smoke detector that you could uh, get the uh, SunTrust logo over so that uh, every time somebody looked at it, they see the SunTrust uh, kind of a version of the uh, people that are sending out business cards. Yeah, very with, much so. And the neat thing about a smoke, smoke detector, if you want, you, know, you can stay in touch with them every year by sending a new 9-volt battery. I like that. Maybe we're coming up with something here. <laughs> Um, let me ask you something. Uh, do you do you deal? Uh, you said you deal with about five settlement attorneys. Uh, are these attorneys that uh, I would think at this time they pretty much what control the business in that city as far as settlements? Yeah, we have about uh, three to five attorneys that do probably ninety percent of the closings in town. Uh, of course, we're set up with all attorneys in town. We don't. Uh, um, show any real favoritism, but, um, you know, if the client is in my office and, um, of course, uh, that question comes up during the uh, um, uh, good faith estimate as far as, you know, what attorney they're going to be using, um, if they don't have one in mind, I'll, I'll recommend maybe two or three, you know, kind of rotating them along and suggest they give them a call and make sure you drop my name with them. At, and, um, if, and, and if they wish, I'll be happy to call and, and maybe get some pricing for them, uh, even on the spot. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's one thing else I want to mention, John, at, at, uh, at the application uh, process. Something that I do, maybe other loan officers do or don't, but I go through that good faith estimate line by line. And I think it takes a lot of the mystery out of the process, you know, as far as who's doing what, what is going to be happening, what's going to be occurring, what does this fee mean, what does that fee mean. It eliminates a heck of a lot of questions down the road because, you know, if they call back with a question, what about this or that, you got to stop what you're doing, pull that file, yank it out, and, you know, explain something to them. So I want to, again, make this transaction as crystal clear from the beginning, going through that good faith line by line. And, and it does solve a lot of 
questions and, and closing hindrances down the road. Mm. Well, most of the laws that you're doing are they um, uh, are they credit challenge? Are they cash challenge? Or do you have uh, some areas that uh, you seem that uh, that come up in small towns that might not come up in uh, other areas? I would say uh, most are credit challenged right now. Mm -hmm. um, Does that mean you have to go govy? Pretty much in some, yeah. The, if the credits are, are marginal and you know scoring in the 650, 620 range, uh, we have to revert that over to typically FHA. Um, do you find that that's a, a hindrance? I mean, do you like dealing with FHA or it, you know we it's certainly a lot more well. paperwork. You know, we can a little more paperwork. Uh, we're kind of used to it. Um, you know, we can put those through DU now. Usually, get some good results. Um, my pricing on it's a little better. You know, I know I don't have to go as, as steep as, as on a conventional loan, and uh, maybe maybe dealing with a less um, savvy type customer also. Do you um, do things? I, I was talking to I think it was Ed Napper or whatever. Uh, do you do seminars uh, for uh, for new home buyers or you know, anything I'm, out of the box? New homes, uh, um, vacation property, whatever. Sure. And you know I, I've. I've Done seminars, first time home buying seminars before, and um, just never seemed to click with them. You know, where I'd get seven, you know, people there, um, just not the results that I really, really were looking for. So it didn't work for you. It really didn't, and you know, they're hard to market and hard to get out on the street that you're you know, that you're doing these things. Number one, um, you can spend a lot of money in advertisement and getting the word out, and I tried and tried different things on this, and even meeting neutral locations at the library, et cetera. And uh, just have very nominal turnout. Mm. I, wonder, I wonder if that's typical of a small town. It might be. I think uh, most most of our clients, I think, get a hooked up with a realtor first. They think that is their first step. Um, so, getting those people from the realtor over to myself and getting them pre-qualified or uh, pre-purchase consultation is, is extremely important. So, I do probably two hours, three hours out of my day is pre-qualified speaking with new potential people and, of course, supporting the realtor that they're working with and making sure that that individual gets back to that same realtor. And generally, I call them on the spot. I just qualify John and Mary here. They look absolutely great. They're qualified for X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. I have them here in my office. Would you like me to send them by or, you know, is there anything that you need from them or would you like to speak with them? So I try to make that a point to call them while they're here and get them back with that appropriate realtor who referred them to me in the beginning. Hmm. The um, do you give a lot of loans uh, the other way around? Do you find that you're in a position at times to give uh, loans to realtors because you are getting that, you know, I Tried that before, John, and I thought that was a great concept. Not only you know, um, am I going to do the bulk of the, the business here, but I know I'm going to start referring loans, and it's always ninety percent of the time it's backfired on me. Where I'll refer John and Mary out to uh, Realtor A. Yeah, word gets get, out, right? Not even get, get a call from Realtor X. <laughs> yeah. What you dirty says? <laughs> this is my client. Well, I asked them five times, "Are you working with anyone?" Right. And they said, "No." I wonder. I wonder if in a larger environment, urban, it's a little easier to get away with that. You know. No. Uh, they don't they, think it's so personal. Yeah. Well, if you referred it to Realtor A, why didn't you refer it to me? Right. Exactly. You, know, you get that type of thing. So I, I try not to do that any longer. Uh, it's just. I got burned on it one too many times. Do you do you have a, uh, the typical people that are coming into your town? Uh, are these active, growing towns? Uh, what kind? What is the demographics of a small <laughs> town? Recently, it's been just the opposite. People are leaving. Um, we had, a, I told you earlier, have a heavy concentration of textile. You know, the Tall Tex, which was a Fortune 500 company. Now you're down on the North Carolina line, heading towards Raleigh on 95. Uh, just north of Greensboro, 220. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, right on the line. But we had a good part of our marketplace consisting of textile with the Tall Tex and the Hamco and the Plum and the Sara Lee and the, et cetera. And we literally have no textile here in town any longer. And this is, I think, a direct affiliation because of NAFTA. That's right. Running those sewing jobs down south. Yeah. Um, and um, so we have no textile. And we have the highest, I don't know, this uh, highest unemployment in Virginia. I don't know if that's a goal or accomplishment or something we should be praised about, but we're running 20% in the city right now, unemployment, mm -hmm. presently. And yet up north in the Washington urban areas right now, it's probably close to uh, 3%, yeah, if, if which, is un, which is actually technically, you had that, you took economics and mm -hmm. I was in the international economics major. I mean, that technically that's underemployment. Sure. At those rates. Uh, Roanoke City at 1.7. Um, it's just incredible. Um, but uh, 
you know that that has slowed you know, the, the flow of applications, of course, and uh, trying to react accordingly with it. Do you find though that uh, maybe in some, some of these small towns are enjoying a rebirth? I know some of the uh, mill, old mill towns up in Massachusetts. Uh, you know, made just enormous mm-hmm. strides in attracting some high tech industry uh, just because of some of the labor rates. Well, you know, our um, planning and development committees are working on that, and um, um, I think it, in some of these urban areas, people like the old time, uh, you know, the, to be able to walk on the downtown areas, get a, get a, I guess an ice cream coat in the evening, that type of thing. And, you know, I wouldn't, I said I grew up in Cleveland, two plus million people. I don't think I'd want to go back to the world. I enjoy my lifestyle here. I enjoy, you know, commuting my three and a half miles to work, going through four stoplights. They're all, all on green. That's rush hour. Um, so I think there's, you know, there's a balance between, um, you know, the, the, the urban environment and, and the quality of life that I think I have here for my, myself and my family. Um, I know Don Ehrman uh, and uh, Linda, uh, they, they feel the same way, too, that the trade-off in the environment is absolutely worth it to them. No, with, they wouldn't move if they, you know, no matter what kind of money you mm-hmm. gave them. Um, and I think that's important. Uh, you know, I don't work a lot of hours. I work 40 hours a week. I'm here at 8. Uh, by 5.30, I'm, I am out of here. And um, people know where to find me if they, if they need me. Um, Do you have a, a pager uh, phone? Yeah, I have a. I work off a pager. Uh, you have a cell phone, it, but the realtors have my home phone and my business phone. And uh, what about a cell phone? Do you have a cell yeah, phone? Yeah, sure. So you have it all? Not all the time. I just, usually my wife has it. So um, mm-hmm. uh, someone, you know, I use my beeper for a rate link, and um, also my office if they need me if I'm out of the office, and I immediately check in. And um, usually I spent uh, probably a good ninety percent of my month in my in my office at my desk. Realtors contact me uh, when they need me, but, and of course, vice versa. Um, but I don't, you know, because of my the bulk of the business I do, um, I really don't go out that much any longer mm-hmm. and, and do those calls. Well, I think you find some of the more successful people that have been around a while, uh, it does kind of reverse itself. I uh, did an interview a couple of days ago with a woman, a wonderful woman, and uh, she's reached a point where she has a young child and has a you know pretty structured life, and, and she wants some of that uh, that free time. So she doesn't work as many weekends, yet still you know does the numbers, which is really what it's all about anyway. And, and the realtors enjoy being able to pick up the phone, and they're going to reach me here. And we have voicemail, but you know we pick up the phone within two rings with a friendly, warm greeting. You will contact someone when you call my office. You're not going to get my voicemail, and nine out of ten times, I'm going to get back with you within a half hour. So. Uh, see, that's that's another that's thing. Service. I find that uh, uh, when you're dealing with top-level loan officers, uh, all of them recognize the importance of getting back as quickly as possible. You, you would think it'd be a no-brainer in the mm-hmm. business, but uh, obviously there's a lot of people that don't do it. Well, they think they can call in a couple hours, it'll be fine. Well, by that time, I think, you know, they're calling for a reason. Usually they have a client in front of them, and they need some answers. Exactly. And if you're not available, if you can't take that call and answer those questions, you know what? They're, they're calling someone else. And at some point, they stop calling. Yeah. And they don't say anything. True. That's true, John. That's exactly the way it works. So I, I think that whole concept of service level, um, you know, it, whether you're in a small town or whether you're in a large town, there's there's some basics that uh, that never change. I, I do think that uh, there are some different ways that business are done in small towns. I think you've brought some of them out. One of the most important is not concentrating among a couple of small realtors that you really need to spread your base out in some of the smaller towns. And uh, I think that's very valuable advice. I think I'm going to end it here on this high point. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to uh, talk to us and uh, certainly wish you the best. Thank you, John. I certainly enjoyed our time together. Great. Thanks, Todd.